Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2021 horror thriller Don't Breathe 2. A film that is directed by Rodo Sayegez. It's written by Fade Alaves, who directed the first film. And it stars once again Stephen Lang, as well as Madeline Grace and Brendan Sexton III. Now, this film, if you can remember back to uh, the first film, d the first Don't Breathe. Uh, it's a film I actually only saw for the first time this last this year, I think it was, or late last year. And I reviewed it on the channel. And it really blew me away, that film. I thought it was really good. Uh, edge of the seat thriller and kind of spun the home invasion film on its head almost. Uh, very good, very unique, and a brilliant performance by Stephen Lang. So... Um, a sequel really didn't, you know, didn't ever seem there was going to be a sequel. And then the film and the character were so popular, they've obviously decided to go ahead with that. And this time round, Stephen Lang is, um, he has a daughter in this one. Um, now, that kind of makes you feel a little bit uncomfortable knowing the character that we met in the first film and what he would, was prepared to do to replace his daughter in that film, I suppose. Um, so we know that his supposed daughter in this film won't be his daughter and he probably got her through some, you know, <laughs> dodgy means. So you kind of a bit like that with this character still. Um, so he's got this daughter on a bit of a short leash. He won't let her out very much, um, trying to keep her safe, etc., etc. Um, and then lo and behold, uh, these gang of... Um, I don't know, unfortunates turn up and basically track the girl back to where she lives um, and attempt to abduct her from the blind man. As you could imagine, he doesn't accept this particularly well. Um, and then the, the film kind of turns into like a uh, revenge um, scenario for the blind man he basically is doing everything in his power to save her from these abductors uh, and get her back right what are my thoughts on don't breathe too well sequels are hard anyway to pull off um th i think this is a competent sequel uh, is the best compliment i can give it really i i, I enjoyed it it was brutal it was very violent um i think the difficulty I had with this film was the character was so dark. This blind man in the first film, he was a villain. He was a horror character. And this time round, they try and turn it on its head again a little bit and turn him into like an anti-hero. I, I struggled to accept that, even though the people he was pitted against in this film, um, and a couple of them in, in particular, uh, were arguably worse than him. So it was like bad against bad almost in this film. And the only innocent in between was the girl, Phoenix, um, who was desperate to learn more about who she is and her past. Was getting very little from the blind man, um, other than lies, as you could imagine. And then she's given a glimmer of truth later on. Um, but that truth turns out to be the truth she probably didn't want to hear. Um, so it, it, it's it's an odd one this because you find yourself at times struggling to root for anyone here in this film um, it, it's a very dark film both tonally and visually <laughs> um, but I mean there's some really brutal moments in this film that will merely make you cringe um, again I, I, I like this character of the blind man I'm just, and I, I suppose I commend what they tried to do to blur the lines between good and evil. So he's very much in the grey area in this film. He's, he's seeking redemption, I suppose it's fair to say at times in this film. Um, but it, it's almost like you, you need a wash when you've watched this film. It's like, it's like bathing in mud. There's darkness everywhere. Every character's dirty and dingy and scruffy and mucky and horrible characters it's crammed full of horrible characters and like i say you've got this phoenix character who's the innocent here um 
but she's like sandwiched between all this darkness and horribleness. And it's, it's, it's almost a hard film to like because of that, because there's very little light shone into this film. Um, but yeah, an interesting sequel, definitely to the first one. Um, it was never going to live up to the first one because the first one was so different and so original and played with the genre, like the home invasion genre and, toyed with it and played with it and didn't give you what you expected and you know i really like that it kept you really on your toes and this time round, it didn't really it wasn't able to really do that this is essentially a, a film of two acts well three acts you get the introduction of him and his so-called daughter at the beginning um then it splits into two acts then the film you've got the uh this gang attempting to adopt the girl from his house the blind man's house and then the second act is him. Uh, I mean, the the second part of that is him trying to get her back from um, this gang. But it's it's kind of the same thing in the different locations. Do you know what I mean? It's it's him pitted against all these thi- all these gang members. He goes a bit Rambo here and there, you know, with some of the things that he does, very Ramboish. Um, but I, I was I was entertained by this. It was kind of what I expected. I did see a trailer of it, so it, it was pretty much what I expected. Didn't really give me any real surprises here. Um, so I think if you're a fan of the first one, you will enjoy aspects of this one, but just don't be expecting a film of the same level because it, it isn't really. I'm going to give this one a 6.5 out of 10. Worth checking out for sure but a bit of a disappointment, I'm not going to lie. That is my review for Don't Breathe 2. I hope you liked it. Thank you very much for watching. I will be back with more reviews and content on the channel very, very soon.